friends. Welcome to The Mindful Professional. My name is Al Morrow, and I'm here to share with you why I think your professionalism sucks. That's right. It sucks. And why do I say that? And why does that sound so unmindful? Well, it's because it's true. I hate to break it to you. And I don't just mean businesses in general. I mean just employees. And how individuals carry themselves through life. And I'm also talking to you, the graduate the one that has the degrees, the one that has spent so much time getting it right so that they can go out and thrive. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the thing of it is, is that some of you, excuse me, many of you out there are so unprofessional with what you have learned that you actually inspire others not to go to college. (laughs) Do you see what I'm saying? Because you represent the hard work that you put into your vocation, whatever that may be. Even those of you who have not gone to college, maybe you've gone to just a technical school, like myself. Maybe you... uh, just simply embraced business and you got caught up into something and it took off for you and you're just rolling with it. Whatever your situation is, there's a fundamental line of professionalism that exists within all vocations. I don't care if you're a foreman trying to build a building, if you're a mechanic, or if you're a doctor, whatever you do to make a living, or you're in that call center, right? Or you're working for that theme park, whatever it is, you are representing the brand, correct? You are representing something that you're putting your time and effort into, that you are supposed to, quote-unquote, value. But then why does your professionalism suck? And I'm very serious, friends. Look look all around you. When was the last time you went to a, a, a fast food restaurant or somewhere and the service was just horrid? How many times have you seen that? And these folks may work their butts off, right? Put a lot of time, effort, and energy into providing a service for you. Into trying to appreciate the experience of a customer or a client visiting them. But how many times have we have just seen that there is no appreciation for? They're just ready to go home. They just want to do the job, clock out, and get out. I have seen this across the board, friends, from people that are in fast food or things like that to very high-paying jobs, just not care. They did their work. They did their things. They're doing their job. They got their money, and they go. So, what am I doing here? Why? Why why does it need to be that another individual needs to step up, write a book, which I have, called The Mindful Professional? And that's not just a plug. I went out and I did something about it. Because my personal experience, not only as a client, but as... Uh, an employee of said companies and experiences 
taught me more than, than anything I could have learned back in, in college. It taught me about the lack of empathy, the lack of respect that is being treated towards one another. And most importantly, most importantly, the lack of empathy, respect, and well-being that is treated to your actual self. And so I wrote that book to get to the root of the problem. The grand experiment, if you will. The root of the issue so that you could uproot it, turn it around, and open your eyes. And from where I stand, what I have seen and experienced is absolutely dreadful. And it had to be done. The book had to be written. And I find that I have to make this uh, platform to speak and share my thoughts with you. Because I care. I really do care. I care about the people that are working. I care about the people that uh, especially the moms out there that are juggling jobs, taking care of their kids, or maybe their husband is going through health issues and the wife steps up, or the, the, the husband is stepping up because the, the wife has, you know, got cancer. Like I've experienced with my father, you know, going through that with my mom. And I've seen behind the scenes of what people go through to maintain and thrive, and it's hard. It's hard on all of us, okay? Especially the ones that are mature enough to understand that it's, it's, it's difficult just trying to survive. It's, it's, it's gonna be difficult. You're gonna have bills, you're gonna have uh, issues in life, you're gonna have things that pop out of nowhere that just suddenly swipe, swipe your goals, you know, and then you kinda of have to start from the ground up and take what you've learned and apply it somewhere. So the humanity part of all of us is what's missing in professionalism, leadership, and teamwork. Honest to goodness teamwork and professionalism. It's literally been thrown out the window. And it's a shame because it's so rampant, and it's rampant due to a big part, of course, of the world, the state of the world, the way that it is, right? Where people think that their uh, uh, thoughts and feelings don't matter, and if they do matter, they get to burn down a building to prove it. <laughs> they get to raid something to prove it. It has to come to that just to get people's attention, just to say, hey, I'm a human being. I'm, I'm worth something. And you know how I'm worth it? By causing you harm <laughs> and by yelling in your face. That's how I get your attention. You know? And so we live in a world and a platform that is used to just um, stepping on your toes to get your point across. That's how we communicate now. Oh, opinion, opinion, opinion. And oh, this is, you know... And even in places that strive for uh, having a workplace that's equalized, it's not really equal when you look at it. Because there are people being left out all the time. Even people like that have a voice like I have, were totally left out and tossed to the side. Because it's too squishy. <laughs> it's too fluffy. Oh, you got to care about each other. Ah, eh, you know, who needs that? Let's just get through the day, earn our money and go home, you know, and die. Let's go have a beer and just let's 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 go after work and just get drunk. And then then hang over, wake up the next day and go right back to work. Repeat, rinse and go. You know, and that's the state of mind that everybody's in. And I can hear a lot of you out there going, yeah, <laughs> get drunk. You know, after work, we go and we get drunk and we, you know, 
we, we just got to socialize. Anything to blow off the steam of this job. You know, that's how people should say the word job. Job. Because that's what it's like. There's, it's like cracks in the, in the cement and the pavement. You know, and so, again, why on earth would I be here talking about all this and writing a book called The Mindful Professional? Well, it's simple, friends. You're not here forever. You know, you're not here forever. It's one of those things to where you get to a point and... Yeah, you may have gone through a lot of things in your life that have tainted your empathy for life, right? To where suddenly, you know, rose-colored glasses is a fantasy, is, is you know, anybody who's quote-unquote, you know, uh, nature lovers or trying to just be in harmony with life and all that, they're looked at as, you know, come on, let's admit it, you, you think they're spacey. You think that they're not focused, they're not, um, you know, or they're demonic for some of my real Christian-y friends out there who are, you know, just, you're either, you either, your light is turned on or you are in hell, you know, and so, and love to you all who think that, you know, there's no judgment towards you guys, although you judge everybody else. So, that being said, love to you all, is this. Okay, the empathy's shot. It's just shot. You guys out there who are claiming that you're great at business and that you are uh, even trying to be inclusive and you're trying to uh, open the door to bring everyone in and to have a place where it's balanced. Your balance is not balance, friends. I've been in so many different companies. Almost, I, I almost feel like an undercover manager in ways, to where I've had to, you know, that show that under undercover boss. That's how I feel like sometimes. Even though I may not be the CEO of that company, I I still have gone into these companies with that mindset and just watched and observed, and I've just been appalled. You know, it has been appalling. It's been nerve-wracking. It's been uh, mentally, emotionally, and physically draining. And these are people that run these companies and manage these areas that say that they are on the top of their game. Well, friends, I'm here to tell you that is not the truth. And there is a factor missing from a good portion of these companies and businesses to where, of course, the profit is the main underlining principle, right? You don't have the profit, you don't have the business. But there's another component to also having the business that is being left out. And that's the empathy factor. That is the balance, work-life balance factor. Once you take that out of the equation, your turnover is going to be crazy anyway. I was just told recently on a job that I was on that we were just a number. That we are just a number. That we might as well not even have names. We might as well just have code names. Like, my name is number seven. And I'm identified as number seven. Okay, almost like, like prison inmates. And you are... You know, I was told in a training class that every one of us are replaceable. We are numbers. And that every day you've got to struggle to earn your keep. Is this 1864? Sorry to put it that way. I'm a big history buff. I appreciate history. I appreciate all the lessons we learn from history, right? That's great. That's fantastic. But... We've also learned a lot of things since then, right? And it's like we're still living in the past. Even those who claim that they're inclusive, they're not really all that inclusive. 
it's just generated towards certain individuals so that there's a feeling of more equalization, but there's still a ton of people left out. So it really isn't all that inclusive. People still need to study what that truly means and that word because it, it's, it's, uh, it's still in a realm to where uh, there's, a, there's still separation and division. And you can see it in the workplace. It's not that hard to see. It's right in front of your face if you just know how to look. So that being said, friends, it's time for a change. That's what's happening anyway, right? Everybody's changing. Everybody's trying to look at things from a different perspective and trying to have a voice and all that. And, you know, this is no, no different. But the thing of it is, friends, is that when you remove the empathy factor from any business, from any corporation, from even politics, from uh, even religion and faith, all of those kind of things, when you remove the empathy factor, you're going to cause instant division. You're going to have instant turnover in whatever it is that your, your vocation is. The stability is not going to be what you think it is. You're just going to have to start from the ground up all over again. Even if you have a degree, you're still going to have to work in a new place, a new environment, new people, new situations, new uh, uh, pay rates. You know, maybe you get paid once a week, every two weeks, or monthly, or salaried. However it is, your situation is still going to change. Your your degree is not going to um, assure you that everything is just going to be a straight line. And if you think that that's what that's going to be, then you're sorely mistaken. This is why the factor of judgment and, and criticism towards other people that do not have a degree is, um, of course, the probability that the one with the degree will get a higher pay but I've seen people without a degree get paid more and have a more steady income and more focus than the people with the degree. With de with the degree, so friends, it's a it's a catch twenty two situation. And the thing of it is, there is one thing that either you have or you don't have that is going to carry you through any situation and either lead you to success that's healthy or lead you to success that is going to eventually kill you. So that's where I pose the question, which one do you want? You know, and I'm talking to even you health professionals out there that think that you've got it covered, but then you're constantly exhausted and your health is going down the drains while you're helping other people have health. So again, the personal well-being is put on the, uh, the back burner because you've got to live, survive, sustain, maintain the best that you can. You're in survival mode, right? And when a person is in survival mode, they're really not thinking about empathy and about caring about other people or themselves. They're just trying to pay the bills and trying to get things done. And there's nothing wrong with that. They're trying to take care of the kids. They're trying to do 12 different things all at once. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you're dead, you can't do anything anyway, right? And so what I'm talking about is longevity is about the gift of life that you're being given to live on this earth to be more than just a dollar sign, to be more than just a number. And you'd be surprised how many corporations, small and large, guys, I'm talking about itty-bitty LLCs and, you know, sole proprietors and all... Just everyone who really does just not value their own personal well-being at all. And it comes through in their delivery towards their clients, 
towards their finances, even if they've got things that they want, and they got their house, they got their things and all of that, they still, you know, that doesn't guarantee that they're happy. It means that they're just glad that they, you know, just they have a, uh, a physical foundation in earth. But the thing of it is, friends, is that all you are? Even if you go to church and you have, you know, you try to have a balance and try to have, quote unquote, Christ in your life, right? You try to have, or if you're metaphysical or if you're spiritual, whatever it is, you try to meditate. And I do teach meditation, by the way, because it is a huge part of stress management. And this has to go back to what I said about the well-being of the person is being forgotten. And the number one thing that emphasizes the loss of that empathy and well-being is criticism of other people. I have to put it that way. Um, I could put it even more bluntly to be honest with you, because people are just have a doggy dog mentality and the thought of having positivity, well-being, and to stop criticizing their loved ones and other people is just fathomless because probably that's how they were raised. They don't know anything else. You know, just like the people that uh, uh, go out drinking every night after work or they just, you know, the there's a real lackluster vibe in the air that I don't have to be positive. I can go and go to work and walk all over you. I just want my money, go home and just, and, you know, there's this attitude that they will maintain till the day they die. And there's no shaking them up unless someone close to them passes away again, because maybe the, the first situation didn't do the trick, you know, or uh, most cases, most cases, Folks that all of a sudden, and I've talked about this in uh, in great detail and length in my book and in other uh, circumstances, you get a diagnosis, right? And and you're told you only have so much time, or you, you know, then all of a sudden, hey, bam, snap, I'm ready to start taking my well-being seriously. And you know, maybe I was kind of rude to everybody else before. You know, in my job, in my personal life, you know, maybe maybe I could have been a little bit more empathetic. I could have been a bit more understanding. And uh, then you start thinking about that stuff, right? When it really hits home to you. And then you realize how many years maybe you've been selfish, just kind of thinking about yourself. Uh, and when I mean yourself, I don't mean your well-being at all. Okay. And that's another topic for another time. But... Uh, because people don't value their well-being to begin with until a doctor says, hey, you you really got no other choice here. You, you either value well-being or, you know, you're, you're going to go downhill faster or uh, there'll be no cure. And so, so it all comes down to friends, you know, what do you want? You know, do you feel that, uh, and maybe, not maybe, but more than likely, all your perspectives are based on just what you believe in life. Maybe you feel like you're are you're just worm food. You're just going to end up dead, so why not? You know, let's go ahead and drink our life away, pay our bills or not pay our bills, and just you know, let's just live life recklessly and just you know, let's leave our mark. Let's go, boom, <laughs> right? And and that's great. But think about all the people that you've impacted along the way to where you may treat them nice on the surface, but maybe you're. Uh, uh, you love to gossip, you you just, you know, deep down, you really don't want anything to do with real empathy or just uh, trying to um, unite people. Uh, you just kind of want to do you, right? That famous saying, do you. And nobody says, hey, do what makes you healthy. Do what brings health. They just say, do you. You know, because doing you can mean a billion things. Hey, you know, right, yeah. Does do you mean, okay, well, what's in my best interest is going and murdering that person or going and just, you know, you know, there's no clarity. There's no line drawn. There's no, it's too vast. So you can't just simply say, go do you. 
you you really can't you you say it but there's no real understanding behind what that means because that can mean a million things and that person you know do me oh great you know and then that person and they they go off themselves because that that's what they feel is in their best interest it's not based on their well-being it's not based on their uh, their empathy towards life and towards their situations and the real understanding and maturity of turning things around. So how can you do yourself, you know, figuratively speaking, if you don't even know who you are? So what are you doing? You're just, you know, you're just going on a whim. And for most people, that's what they think this life is. It's just a whim. Just make your best judgment and just go for it. And, and that's wonderful. And that's what you do, you know, especially if, if you don't know where to go next, it's better to move forward than just stay stagnant. Right. But what I'd like to see have happen, I've been talking about this now for a little bit. And the answer that I would like to see implemented is across the board, empathy and respect, not just inclusion, but actually empathy and respect for what you already have in play there's no there's no reason being inclusive if you don't even know how to treat each other from the get-go and then you're just going to welcome a bunch of new people you're not going to know how to treat them either you know so the word inclusive loses its luster very quick if you really don't have the empathy and wellness uh mindset in play because then you're just then it just becomes half a word. It's not even what it truly means. So that being said, and I am sure that I'm ruffling some feathers out there, and that's good. Because your feathers need to be ruffled. <laughs> I, I I've seen it out here, and people are too comfortable in this opposite way of getting things done to where it's just plain out unhealthy. That's really what it amounts to. It's unhealthy. It's uh, your number. You are replaceable. I've seen, I've come from workplaces that feel like a family. And then all of a sudden, three people are let go in an instant. In an instant. With no consideration for your livelihood, for nothing. Even if there's a severance, that, that severance don't mean anything. There's no even there. There's no caring factor there. There's no hey, we're going to look after you. We're going to take none of that's there. And you could have dedicated years and years of your life and hard work to that situation. And so, the heartache about all this is that, as much as your degree has played, as much as your hard work has played in the factor, or you're just your character is so good to where you've given a really true professionalism, leadership role, you care about people, you try to be that way. And all of a sudden, the company in general just says goodbye. And they want to bring in maybe someone younger. And then there's that, isn't there? Bring in someone younger, bring in, bring in uh, individuals that are more apt to just do what you say. I, I've uh, <laughs> filled out applications and taken tests for certain positions that have specifically asked you, do you like classical music? <laughs> do you like classical music? Do you enjoy work-life balance or do you just want to get things done? A or B. Things of that nature, right? And then you get the letter, oh, we're sorry, but we're, we're not going to hire you. That's not what we're looking for. Because what they're looking for are robots, animatronics, if you will, to be, to show that, hey, we have a human factor, which is what I've been told in various positions, that, hey, we have a human factor. We don't want this script. We don't want to be robots. We want you to be human, but we also want you to say exactly what we want you to say. So you see the catch there? To where you're not a robot, but you're still being programmed to exactly be 
only what they want you to be within a certain parameter. And that's with any job, right? But you're still a robot. I can't tell you how many times I've read on applications and in quizzes and different things that are you a creative, innovative thinker that can act on your own accord? Or do you thrive in teams and follow the rules that your boss has laid out? So my question is, why isn't there both? Why? Because they don't want a human being there. They want a robot. That's it. They may dress you up so that you look a certain way, so that you, you know, they make sure that, you know, you get paid enough to barely survive. In most cases, right? And you put in so much time and so much effort. But then at the end of the day, they can just walk up to you and say, sorry, you know, we, we got to have cutbacks. Or if they care and keep you there, right? They keep everything just livable and breathable. And hopefully you make lots of friends, right? Because that's part of the human factor. But then there are jobs out there that are just, you know, don't talk to each other. <laughs> anyway. So the point of it is, friends, is that you aren't here forever. This, this time spout that you're being given, and in many cases, sometimes extended, right? How many times have we seen, you know, if, if a person has a heart attack or, uh, you know, their life really shifts, but then, you know, you get up, brush yourself off, and, you know, maybe you have a new ticker put in your chest. Maybe you uh, beat cancer. Maybe you rose to a certain situation and reinvented yourself, which is what I'm suggesting we all do. And I'm not saying that as a thing of telling you what to do. I am suggesting that, hey, you know what? That may not be a bad idea. Just because life is short and a person you speak to today may not be here tomorrow. Right? So when you go to work or uh, you clock in and every single person or situation uh, that presents itself to you with a human being involved, uh, there is no guarantee they're going to be here at the end of the day. There is no guarantee. I don't know what you all are expecting out of this. Just like your pay tomorrow, there is no guarantee you're going to show up or be alive to accept that pay. There is no guarantee. So this is what I propose is to go and what the mindful professional is all about is to go and search your mindfulness about those things and just ponder them and just understand that this isn't forever. This too shall pass. Even the things you have that are wonderful in your life, that will even pass. You know, change is inevitable. It's inevitable, friends. So the main thing is, is what are you going to do moment to moment? And I know I already hear a lot of things and how I would respond and how I used to respond the best that you can. Just do the best that you can, right? But here's the thing, is that many of us are afraid to take care of ourselves. And when I mean take care of yourselves, I don't just mean the bills. I don't mean any of that. I mean of your just overall well-being the thing that we weren't taught usually as kids about how to treat ourselves and how to treat each other. It's just go, 
get stability, be a success, raise kids, do the thing, and die. <laughs> I really hate putting it that way, friends. I truly do. I, I, I'm not trying to be a bummer, but the reality is that it is. It is a bummer. Let's just let's just call it what it is. And people go through life like that. You know. And especially, you know, individuals with an HR mentality and with a business mentality usually don't have that emphatic factor, right? But look at the if you're going to work, you are part of a business. <laughs> Most likely, you you are part of a a structured company organization with board of directors and people on the top and i will guarantee that a lot of them most likely a good majority of them do not have that empathy factor it is about the numbers and um and many of them want you to have the feeling and the sense that you're having fun at your job or that you know that's why they have casual shirt day <laughs> or, you know, they make little things to where, hey, on this day, you can be you, right? On this day, you can actually be yourself or maybe a little bit more than you did the day before. Or God forbid, on this day, we'll play classical music as you're trying to get your work done, you know? as a way of, you know, showing you that we care, right? And so in a lot of my consulting that I do for companies and for just people who want to kind of shift their mentality, the number one thing I bring up is what are you doing to take care of yourself while you're working? You know? What is it that you're not doing? Because we already got down to a pat what you are doing to do the job. Your aching feet at the end of the day tell you what you're doing. You're, you know, and I don't mean that you're not supposed to go out there and work hard. I'm just saying that the value of empathy and working smarter is not at its forefront. And something's got to give. But that's what we'll continue to talk about, shall we? And so, that being said, on this first episode, I hope that you take better care. Not just the normal care you already do, but I challenge you to rise to the occasion to take better care of yourselves, each other, and to realize that every day is a gift. Every day is precious. Every day is worth you valuing the moment. And when you go to your nine to fives, when you go to your jobs that you're used to, just understand that you are likely replaceable and that tomorrow is never promised. So I encourage you and challenge you to think about what that means, not in a depressive sort of way, but to understand that maybe you were more than you thought and that you have more to offer and more to value than what's being allowed for you to have. And just to think about that. Until next time, friends.